Hello and welcome to MaryCast. This is Dr. Mark Mirabali, Professor of Theology and Mariology at the Franciscan University of Steubenville. I want to speak a little bit about the history of the Rosary and the nature of the Rosary. Why would Pope after Pope call us to the daily praying of the Rosary? There many beautiful prayers. There's a, there's a multitude of, of prayers and offerings we have in, in the wisdom and in the wealth of the Church. Why so much on the Rosary? Why would a guy like John Paul II call the Rosary his favorite prayer? Why would someone like Pope Leo XIII write 11 encyclicals exclusively on the Rosary as we were entering the 20th century? Uh, why this emphasis by the magisterium? I mean, I thought the Rosary was a private prayer, I heard one person say once. Um, it's a private prayer only in so far as an individual can pray it privately, but the Rosary is a public prayer of the Church in the sense of constant and renewed calling from Pope, Saint, Mystic alike for us to pray this rosary. Now, a little bit on the history of the rosary. The papal encyclicals, principally those of Leo XIII, confirm that the rosary was given through a special illumination, a special revelation from Our Lady to Saint Dominic Guzman, the founder of the Dominicans. The context was the 12th and 13th century heresy of the Albigensians. Now, the Albigensian heresy was basically a rehash of Manichaeanism. It was a dualist heresy where the belief was that there's two gods. There's a god of light and spirit, and he's the good god. And then there's the god of matter, the material world, and he's an evil god. And so human life is a battle between the spirit and the material as one god against another god. Well, this is obviously a heresy. Uh, the Albigensians also held that children and the process by which we get children is evil because it's connected with matter, which, as you can assume, would make for a short-lived heresy. Nonetheless, it was growing in France at the time, and St. Dominic, who was a canon, a Dominican canon in Spain, comes over, and in this process, Our Lady gives him this instrument to fight Albigensianism. And as the great Dominican scholar Gergo Lagrange says, the heart of the Rosary Prayer was this. It was Dominic preaching on the mysteries, the gospel mysteries of the Incarnation, the Redemption, and eternal life. And after he preached on these mysteries, he would have the people recite an Our Father and Ten Hail Marys to further uh, incorporate or to embody the, the, the mystery that was just preached. And so this becomes this prayer meditation combination of the rosary in the pondering of scriptural truths. And again, there's different uh, historical accounts of exactly what takes place, but certainly the popes confirm that St. Dominic receives from a special illumination the rosary uh, to battle the Albigensians, and it's something directly from Our Lady. Now, why would this have such an impact on the Albigensians? Because... The joyful mysteries ponder the fact that God becomes man. The good God, the God of spirit, takes on a human nature, which means a human nature can't be evil. God would not take on an evil nature. And then this good God redeems us and leads to our resurrection of the body after his ascension of the body. So it's an organic, intrinsic, uh, really purification and correction of Albigensianism, but it's done through the heart and it's done through prayer. Now, from the 13th to the 15th centuries, there's also some development on the Rosary Prayer. For example, when St. Thomas Aquinas in 1272 writes a commentary on the Hail Mary, it's only the first part of the Hail Mary. The uh, Holy Mary, Mother of God, is not part of the commentary, which means it's not yet tacked on to the Hail Mary. That comes typically uh, accepted somewhere in the 14th and 15th century. Some would say, Blessed Alan de la Roche, the great Dominican uh, promulgator of the Rosary, uh, is the individual who added that prayer. Others simply say, we don't know. But by 1569, with the papal approval of the rosary by Pope St. Pius V, the great hero of the rosary, the great Pope of, of Lepanto, you have the confirmation of what is essential for the rosary. And Pope St. Pius V tells us that you have to pray the Our Fathers and Hail Marys while meditating on the mysteries. And, and let me address a principal objection to consistent rosary praying. Look, this is just the human reality. People say, it's boring. Or, I don't get anything out of it. 
Well, that's only the case when these elements are not there. And these are the three elements that are necessary for all fundamental Christian meditation. Number one, consideration. You have to ponder the subject at hand. Take, for example, the first joyful mystery. You have to ponder the Annunciation in love. Uh, you can do that in many ways. You can put yourself in the scene. You can just take one line, uh, Hail full of grace, the Lord is with you. And ponder that. You can see the overall effect that Mary says yes, and we get the Redeemer. Any way you best ponder the mystery, that's number one, consideration. Number two is application. What does this mystery have to do with me? And that's a key element. Teresa of Avila warns her nuns against pondering without applying. I can look at the, the, the third sorrowful mystery, how Jesus is crowned with thorns, but I don't notice how he endures that. And so when I get humiliated, I react in, in violence and anger. No, we always have to apply the mystery of Christ to us. So consideration, application, and then number three, resolution. But based on the consideration and application, I have to ask the question, what am I going to do about it? How is it going to change my life? Okay, well, I'm going to resolve the next time I am falsely humiliated, I'm going to offer it like Jesus. I'm going to, I'm going to not respond in vengeance or anger. I'm going to use it to save souls. If you use those elements, my friends, consideration, application, resolution, then to say, I'm bored of the rosary, is to say, I'm bored of Jesus. I'm bored of the gospel. And we never want to utter that because we can never tap the richness of the mercy of Jesus. You know, as St. Faustina so beautifully reminds us, um, the call of mercy is, is the greatest attribute of the heart of God. And that comes to us through the praying of the rosary. The graces of redemption, peace, and mercy. So, it is a universal call. And once again, this, this uh, reality of our busyness, uh, not having time... We need the time. In fact, if you make time for the rosary, I promise you it'll save you time. The reason it'll save you time is because you'll view your day through a supernatural lens. You'll view your day through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. That means certain things you'll, you'll choose in virtue of praying the rosary. You'll choose not to do that today. I don't need to do that today. That's not so important. But I'll, I'll do this and that today. It'll make you more effective. It'll make your day more productive. And I'm not saying that should be the first reason why you'll take 20 minutes out and pray the rosary. I'm saying it's simply the case. You should do it first out of love for Jesus and of love for our Blessed Mother. And realizing we need this protection. Satan hates the rosary. That's another good reason that we should be praying it daily. He can't stand the protection it gives us. That's why we should be praying the rosary personally and for our families. So, again, I ask you, if you've fallen out of the practice, today's the day. The graces of the day, Our Lady of the Rosary will assist you to return to this prayer today and invite your family. Surely there will be some difficulties at first if you ask your children to pray the rosary. So be it. There's difficulties in other areas. Parents are not first friends of their children. They are the parents of their children and they're loving and forming them. And isn't it better to put that protection around your children than to uh, dissuade this heavenly protection that Our Lady wants because it's going to take some transition? Let the transition happen. Pray the rosary daily, have your families pray the rosary, and also pray for the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Pray for peace, pray for the proclamation of the fifth dogma, where the Pope will declare Our Lady, the co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate, so she can bring those roles into action. She can mediate graces to our troubled world today. This is why the rosary is ultimately a prayer for peace. Please consider it, praying it today. This is Mark Mervali with Mary Cass saying thank you. And God bless you.